ASUS is constantly pushing the boundaries in terms of powerful products in a sleek external package. This includes the GTX 1080 Strix that I recently reviewed, the PG348Q 34-inch 100Hz ultra-wide monitor, and various other products that they're constantly testing the limits with. In fact, their catchphrase is, in search of incredible. Although personally, I had a fonder feeling towards the alliterative, inspiring innovation and persistent perfection, but I digress. So within the search of incredible, ASUS has announced the GX700VO liquid-cooled notebook. This behemoth of a notebook is intended to push the boundary of what one should expect from a notebook, with a massive price tag to match. Initially, I thought this, this was simply a concept product from ASUS, but ASUS has not only gone as far as providing a review sample for me, thanks ASUS South Africa, but also announced an updated model, the GX800 at Computex a few weeks ago. So with ASUS's clear pursuit of actually bringing this type of notebook to market, does it live up to its top tier price tag? Starting off with the most obvious thing about the notebook, the water cooling dock, or the hydro overclocking system. This massive addition to the back end of the standard notebook sports dual 90mm radiators, pump, reservoir, fans, and not much else. There's the input for the 330 watt external power brick and the connection points for the dock to join to the notebook, but doesn't have anything like a USB 3.0 hub or any extra connections, just the liquid cooled setup. It's incredibly simple to connect the dock to the notebook. All it takes is to set the notebook on the clips that keep it in place and push down on the large lever. Then it's connected. Mind you, the dock will make a loud beeping noise whenever it turns on. And during idle operation, the dock provides a low humming noise that hovers around 48 to 50 decibels. And during a gaming session, it can get up to 55 to 57 decibels with the fans making some noise. Disconnecting the device is just as simple as connecting it. You just push the button that says push and the notebook comes free. There's no need to worry about whether or not the dock or PC is on. You can remove it whenever you feel it is necessary. The components that the hydro overclocking system are keeping cool is the overclockable Intel Core i7-6820HK, which hits up to 4.1 GHz with ease, and a full desktop GTX 980 GPU with 8 GB of VRAM. The GX700 also comes with up to 64 gigabytes of DDR4 RAM at 2800 MHz, a terabyte of incredibly fast RAID 0 NVMe drives, and 802.11ac Wi-Fi. There's a 720p webcam with a dual microphone solution that provides marginal video quality and fairly okay audio recording. The speakers are mounted on the top of the keyboard and are sufficiently loud, don't distort at the top levels, but also lack punch with there being no noticeable presence of a bass due to the lack of a subwoofer. The 17-inch display can come with a 4K panel, but my review unit was the 1080p IPS variety. Its color range is good, but there's some noticeable backlight bleed, particularly on the bottom portion of the screen, inexcusable for such a high-end device. However, its 75Hz G-Sync capabilities provided buttery smooth gameplay, especially since it had the hardware to push games to that 75fps mark. The keyboard has a red backlight, and the keys are really pleasant to use, for a notebook that is. The keys have plenty of travel, no mushiness, and very little flex to the keyboard when typing. There's a row of macro keys at the top, as well as a dedicated button that will bring you into the ROG Gaming Center. The Gaming Center is a one-stop shop for overclocking the CPU, GPU, and adjusting things such as the fan profiles. Overall, this has to be one of the top keyboards that I've used on a mobile device. Battery life as well isn't too shabby. The six cell battery managed to get one hour and 44 minutes on my normal usage testing, which includes productivity work and YouTube videos with the screen at 67%, but it also managed 55 minutes and 18 seconds on battery while playing Doom at the same brightness level. For IO on the left, there's a Kensington lock, dual USB 3.0 ports, mic in, headphone out, and an SD card reader. On the right, you'll find the third USB 3.0 port and HDMI out, as well as a mini display port, dual USB Type-C with one being a Thunderbolt port and the other being a USB 3.1 port, and then finally a gigabit LAN jack. The packaging for the notebook is simply exceptional, with it coming in a large rolling suitcase structure with plenty of padding and straps to keep the entire system stable when transporting. 
On the inside, it holds the notebook, HydroDoc, their 180 and 330 watt power supplies respectively, as well as a ASUS Psyca mouse that I never took out of the box. The weight of this entire product is just as hefty as you'd expect with the notebook itself weighing in at 3.6 kilograms and the dock itself weighing in at 4.8 kilograms. A total of 8.4 kilograms or roughly 18 pounds for the entire package. Not exactly a lap friendly size, but that didn't stop me from trying to get some work done while I was in bed. Now I want to dive into the performance numbers. I did each benchmark on the system with it both on the hydro dock, but also without the dock to see what kind of performance difference it would make. Keep in mind that I kept both the GPU and CPU clocked at the same speed, which was 1228 megahertz core and seven gigahertz memory on the GPU and the CPU was at four gigahertz. And as you can see, the GX700 performed anywhere from 15 to 30% worse on standard laptop mode over when it was attached to the hydro cooling dock. Now, while those discrepancies in performance may look really impressive and like the hydro cooling dock is helpful in increasing the gaming capabilities of the notebook, that's simply not the case. What's to thank for the better performance is not the liquid cooling, but rather the 330 watt power supply that the dock has. During a stress test on just the notebook by itself with both the GPU and CPU at 100% load, the notebook hit a max temp of 88 on the CPU and 68 degrees on the GPU. Those numbers aren't high enough to thermal limit either component in any way. And since those were recorded during an all out stress test, not a typical scenario, the thermal headroom is actually a bit higher on the notebook during normal use cases. Now, don't get me wrong, the hydro dock did help, but it only managed to drop the CPU to 83 degrees and the GPU to 60 degrees during the same stress test. That delta in temperatures between using the dock and not isn't at all large enough to account for the 20% loss in performance. However, monitoring the power draw of the notebook explains it all. When attached to the dock, the system drew between 240 and 245 watts from the wall during a normal gaming session and a max of 270.5 watts in all of my stress testing. When just the notebook was plugged in, it drew 155 to 160 watts during gaming and a max of 175 watts during stress testing. And even if we give the pump radiator fan system on the dock a generous 30 watts of power draw. That means there's still roughly 60 watts of missing power for the notebook when it's on its own 180 watt adapter. And while I understand that a higher wattage draw would mean higher temperatures for the notebook, it's unclear just how much the hydro dock actually helps since thermals aren't an actual issue at the 180 watt power draw for the notebook. One of the main advantages that can be argued for the hydro dock is its higher capacity to overclock because of higher thermal headroom. Unfortunately for the 6820HK, that simply wasn't the case as both with and without the dock, it maxed out at a stable 4.1 gigahertz due to the ASUS software because you can't actually modify it in the BIOS. And then as far as the GPU, the temperatures without the dock don't come anywhere close to thermal limiting temperatures of the GTX 980. It's really unclear as to what actual benefit the cooling dock actually provides. So coming to a conclusion on this notebook isn't as simple as other reviews. There's so many things to consider with the device since it's truly in a class of its own. It can provide desktop grade performance with its high-end 6820HK and a full desktop 980, but also stunts its own notebook performance for no verifiable reason that I can find. The MSI equivalent, the GT80 Titan, actually ships with a 330 watt power adapter for just the notebook. I don't see why ASUS couldn't have done the same here, or at least made the 330 watt power adapter for the dock actually fit into the notebook because they're two separate prongs. And as far as price goes, it can be seen going for $5,000 on Newegg or Amazon. With that pricing, it puts it in the highest of high-end gaming notebooks. And with some of the slightly less than perfect issues or missing features that the GX700 has, such as the backlight bleed, lack of a subwoofer for bass, and a super weak video camera setup, it's disappointing to see that ASUS has cut some corners on this notebook. And to also consider performance, for $300 less, you can get the highest end GT80 Titan from MSI with dual GTX 980s in SLI for better performance. And unfortunately, I can't say that the GX700 VO is better because you can overclock higher with the liquid cooling. I just didn't see that in my testing. It's a great notebook for sure, with some of the highest end specs known to man at this point, but it's a bit overpriced considering the actual performance it delivers. 
Sure, the hydro overclocking dock is a good concept, but seems a bit gimmicky this time around. Maybe the GX800 that was announced at Computex with its SLI GPUs might make a bit more compelling case, but as it stands now, I think the GX700VO sounds much better on paper than what is delivered in real life. And with that conclusion, I'd like to again thank Osu South Africa for sending the GX700VO over for review. Like this video if you found it helpful, dislike it if you think that I'm wrong about the GX700 and the conclusions I came to. You can subscribe to stay up to date on all of my tech-related content, and I will see you guys in the next video. Cheers.